Welcome to Author Master Insights. I'm with Dr. Michael Longyear, and this is an amazing opportunity to speak with a legend of chiropractic neuroscience. He's the author of a breakthrough book, Never Accept Your New Normal, the story of using neuroscience to turn trauma into triumph. Uh, Dr. Michael is the director of chiropractic neurology at the NeuroLife Institute with Life University, as well as the brain optimization in Jacksonville, Florida. He graduated, uh, graduated a valedictorian of his class at Parker University in Dallas, Texas, and has since dedicated his professional life, and I would also say personal life, to researching and learning all he can about the brain and nervous system and to develop non-invasive ways to treat conditions associated with it. His passion lies in treating neurodevelopmental disorders as well as neuropsychological and sports-related injuries. Having fall back, from a month of paralysis and being told he would never walk again. Dr. Longyear never accepted his new normal of being confined to a wheelchair and doesn't believe that other patients should accept their new normal either. Dr. Michael, welcome. And, you know, firstly, congratulations on your book. I mean, it, it's an amazing uh, adventure story in a way um, and, you know, epic you know, reflection of an epic journey. But equally importantly, for me, it's a, it's a message for chiropractic to the community about how we can triumph over adversity. And I think it's just an, an incredible opportunity for people to learn and grow both chiropractic and the general audience as well. So congratulations and, and thank you for taking that step. Well, thank you. And thank you for having me. It's been a journey for sure, both you know in the book and then also this writing the book part and, and all of that has been a journey in and of itself too, so. Absolutely. So let's just start. To, I mean, again, it's a, it's an. I I have bought the book. I've had, I've read through that process. I, I love the story in there, and you know, it, it's a painful way to have to share a story in a way. But I'd love just an introduction to you know your book. You know, never accept the new normal. Talk about the book itself. What the message of that book is, and 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 just let the audience know a little bit about that. Yeah. So you know, kind of. I never started out to write a book. To be honest. Um, I think in life we have to deal with our stuff, so to speak. And if you don't, at some point, it's gonna make you deal with it. And that's kind of how the book started going was, um, you know, I had this injury that I had in the past and I never really dealt with it emotionally or uh, in a lot of ways. And at one point I woke up about four, between four and five o'clock in the morning and I was just, you know, tears streaming down. And the only way to stop the tears and flashes of images and things like that was to start writing it down. Um, and, you know, at some point I looked down at the computer and there were about 40,000 words on there. And I was like, Hey, uh, maybe I should do something with this. Maybe I can help somebody else with it. And so, you know, using my story and then we see a lot of patients and we're never really the first option, but we get a lot of patients that walk in with like a grocery bag full of, uh, um, medical records and diagnoses and they were called every name in the book and the doctor a lot of times has told them this is as good as they're going to get and they walk in and say is there anything that you can do for us so you know seeing what my patients had been through and, and knowing that they needed hope uh, my my goal after a little while with the book was just to maybe give some people hope that they don't have to accept a diagnosis as a sentence you know, it's not the be all end all. It's an idea. It's someone's idea of what might be going on with you and and not to accept it as a limitation. So my goal with the book really was to let people understand that we're not limited by the names that a doctor might call us or that anybody calls us and that there's always a way to health. You know, the power that made the body heals the body and it's got its own plan and its own time frame sometimes. Um, but it, it ultimately has the ability to bring us back from some pretty crazy stuff. It's incredible. And, and you mentioned the word hope there and, you know, and we're never the first option. So, you know, in your book, you, you know, you share your journey, but you also share patient stories and journeys as well. And, and it really is that, you know, as a chiropractor, I know this and I know everybody listening to this will have had exactly the same experience. A patient comes in and it's whether why hasn't anyone ever told me this before and the tears that they have when they sense that it's a possibility that they've never thought was available to them. So, you know, I, I love the fact that you go deep into the recognition of the hope that we can provide people. So what is it that motivates you to, to bring those stories into a book? Because, you know, it, it's very easy, as you said, it's almost a catharsis that you went through in writing. It's a very personal story and it's a very 
Um, it, it's a deep moment of vulnerability, but it's also a moment of hope and inspiration. So how do you reconcile coming to that place of vulnerability and, and very personal storytelling for, for the important message that I have for the patients and the community? Yeah, you know, and I think that was it is, it was very cathartic for me to write it at some point. You know, I think there's a line in the book there that says the book was my therapy. It was probably 20 years too late, but, um, you know, realizing that the journey that I went through maybe took a little longer than it should have, or maybe got stifled a little bit because um, somebody told me that I had to accept this as my new normal, or this was going to be how it was. And, you know, I don't want anyone else to have that experience. I don't want anyone to have to feel like they have a roadblock or a limitation. So, you know, putting it down on paper and, and, and eventually releasing it um, was cathartic for me. One, it was a growing process. You know, I, I actually did a treatment with somebody earlier today. They were treating me and I realized how much I've changed through the release of this book. Uh, just in, in how I've grown and how I deal with the situation and even how I think about everything that I went through uh, as a result of that and now where I am, right? I wouldn't, you know, I often say when I talk about the injury, I wouldn't make my worst enemy go through it, yet I wouldn't trade having gone through it for anything in the world because I kind of like where I'm at. I like what I've become out of it. And I think sometimes, you know, whatever cliche you want to throw out there, it's always darkest before the dawn, you know, this too shall pass, this, you know, what doesn't kill us makes us stronger. I think a lot of that stuff I had to pull from that and, you know, impart that to others that might be going through that same situation and, and help them realize that there's always something else that can be done. It might not be in my office or, or the person next door to me, but, you know, there's always some growth that could happen as a result of, of what we're going through in life. Yeah, and, and it might not be in our office, but invariably it is because chiropractic is such a profound, you know, it has such a, it's not just a profound healthcare model, it, it is a profound system of health, a profound philosophy for health. And you speak deeply on the neuroscience in there as a, and, and you give clear mechanisms and pathways for people to experience that tr triumph over trauma or that transformative moment. So share a little bit about, you know, some of the, the education you provide within the book and some of the clarity about you know directions that people can move in so that you know as, as people listen to this they go i can't get um you know michael's understanding of neuroscience and how it's going to add value to to me as a reader and to, to the community when they read it as well yeah so that's i think one of the biggest release biggest reasons why releasing the book now is it's an amazing time in our profession and in neuroscience kind of at the same time in that there's, you know, it's fun kind of being a neuroscientist and it, it, you constantly have to be reading because everything changes every day. You know, what was true last week about concussion might not be in the literature this time around. Um, so it, it, there's just, there's an explosion of research and informa information and data that's coming in neuroscience as well as in chiropractic. We're understanding better now how to measure the changes that occur with an adjustment and how to measure, you know, up until 2018, we really didn't understand what some parts of the brain do, and we didn't have the ability to image them or see changes. But because of breakthroughs in neuroscience, we can now image the cerebellum, which is the part that's responsible for balance and coordination um, physically. And we can image that and now understand not only that, what it means for movement, but also what it means for emotions and mental health and those kind of things. So it's just, it's fun because now we understand what the chiropractic adjustment does and its effect on the cerebellum because we can image it. And then its effect on the prefrontal cortex because we can image it. And those are some of the breakthroughs that have happened in neuroscience, but then also in incorporating that, that chiropractic research into neuroscience. So it's given us, you know, we always had uh, you know, I have case stories in the book. Every Cairo you talk to has got these amazing case stories and this person and that. And we've always had these really cool anecdotal things that we can now explain with the neurological lens. And, you know, you said chiropractic has always been a, a great healthcare system or, or, you know, way of looking at things. And I look at it as just that. Chiropractic with the vitalistic lens is a way of looking at the patient differently than what the, the current medical paradigms do. But it, with the research behind the neuroscience and what's happening with brain changes, it's giving us insight that we never expected to know. 
um, and that we really never expected to, to see. You know, Dr. Sullivan here at Life, uh, she did her PhD thesis on the chiropractic adjustment and she compared it to physical therapy. And what was really cool, what I thought was amazing and groundbreaking, and when we get it finally published, we'll get to see it and share it, is physical therapy made a brain change, absolutely. But the chiropractic adjustment made a brain change that continued on for one week. And that's, I think, the most profound thing is after you remove that subluxation and you start to activate the brain in that way, the changes that happen for the next five to seven days are profound for that person. Now they're experiencing their world differently and their, their, their mood changes, their personality changes, all of those things that we don't necessarily measure with a, you know, uh, range of motion testing or some of those other things, but they're measurable in that person's life. And so that's why I think, you know, seeing, seeing what I went through and, and not really understanding what the adjustment had done to me at that time, and now applying the breakthroughs in neuroscience and chiropractic and the research as those two meld, it was the right time to get the book out there and, and help people to understand from a scientific standpoint, what it is we're doing and that we now have the ability to measure some of those things. Yeah, I, think, I think what I really love about the book is, as well is, again, every chiropractor has these anecdotal stories, these case studies, and, and there's all these miracles that take place within chiropractic. And we love to experience them ourselves, to have our patients have those experiences and, and even in a way share them within our practice so that our practice members and our uh, and, our, and our team feel really buoyed by the, the impact of chiropractic. But the way that you, rather than telling a pure story within the book, you brought the, as you said, we looked through the vitalistic lens, but you also back it up with the science. So it became more than a story. It became a story backed by science that represents a possible and potential pathway for others because it's not a personal story alone. It's now a scientific basis for a person's transformation and so the way that you weave neuroscience into a clinical setting providing a, um, a, a again that pathway that represents hope is, is, is a really profound way of communicating and educating at the same time and I think a lot of chiropractors can take away from that that rather than just telling a story which is inspirational tell the story with an understanding of how that story unfolded and how it may unfold for others so Share with us about how you started to weave that type of education and that, that, that holistic but simultaneously scientific process into the, into the writing of the book. Yeah, so for me, you know, my chiropractic journey or my health journey that kind of led me into chiropractic was an interesting one. And, and but for me, it was very profound. You know, when I, I'll kind of spoil the book a little bit here in that, you know, I, I was told I wouldn't, wasn't going to walk. And then, um, because I had a spinal stroke and that was just kind of the diagnosis and eventually getting up and being able to walk out of the hospital a month later and the physical therapist did an amazing job getting me to that point but I still didn't have the ability to feel pain and temperature from the lesion site down and it wasn't until a whole year later the first time that I got my first chiropractic adjustment I went home and I put my foot in the water making a shower and I was like oh crap that's too hot and, and it like hit me like, wow, I, I knew that was too hot. Like I could actually feel that, um, you know, and, and my chiropractor at 16 years old telling me what it was kind of went right over my head, right? But then getting to school and getting this kind of bone on a nerve message uh, with things, but trying to figure out, well, wait a minute, which bone did he remove off of which nerve? Um, and, and so I just had to unravel the whole science. So my story of kind of going down that journey of trying to figure out what it is and talking to my mentors, uh, Dr. Michael Hall, um, you know, and others in teaching me that science, that neuroscience, I felt it was important to include that piece because as I started to learn and in my journey of understanding scientifically where we are, it was, it was personal for me. You know, it wasn't like you said, it was professional and it was personal uh, or my professional life as well as my personal life. It is personal for me because having gone through that, I needed that further understanding. And then, you know, the Harvey Lillard story and uh, the guy gets his hearing restored from an adjustment in his neck. There's only one way that happens and that's in brain changes and affecting the brain at a higher level. And, and so for me, I think the science, and I had a, 
I actually had a lot more science in the book and uh, people made me take it out because I could, I could tend to get a little too heavy pretty quick. Um, but for me, the science had to stay in there because I think the scientific understanding is a big part of my journey and how I got here. But I think it's also a big part of our profession and, and where we're headed. And so for me, it was important to keep all that stuff together. Yeah, and I think you did an amazing job. And I, I think, you know, one thing I'd like to, you know, chiropractors watching this, uh, learning about not just your story, but also um, the, you know, the, the process of writing, you, we spoke about it being a catharsis part of your therapy. I think there is also, um, you know, so many people write a book for varying different reasons. It can be for you catharsis or therapy. It can also be, um, to, some people just feel like they have a message to share. They have to get this message out there. Um, other people do it because I know they, they know it will help their profile, their brand, their practice as a, as a practice growth strategy. So I think, t tell me, and, and has any of those other elements other than the catharsis, the therapy, uh, entered into your mind as a reason for writing this? And so let's share, share with the full overarching motivation for writing this book and, and why you think it's going to be so important. Yeah, so all three of the above absolutely have entered into my mind. You know, when I first started writing this, again, I, I didn't mean to write anything. It just, it was the only way to stop the tears from coming and, and to process through the emotions. And then I got to a point where it was like, you know, reading through it and, and understanding kind of some of the power behind it really um, in, in what I'd gone through. It was like, I have to tell other people this so that they know this is out there and that they know there's a chance to get better from whatever it is they're suffering from. And then, you know, as I'm writing it, I'm like, this is a really good practice building thing. And, you know, Dr. LaMarche, Dr. Jill, I know you know him as well. He's written a few books and that's how, you know, talking to him, that's how he built his practice up in Canada. And so then I started the wheels kind of turning of how can I use this as a marketing tool? And as, you know, I think a book really sets you up as the authority on certain things too. So um, using it to kind of build patient base. And I got a phone call from a guy yesterday or not yesterday, two days ago, I was in the office and he was from California and he's got all of these head injuries and spinal cord injuries and he's in a wheelchair. And he called because he had gotten a copy of my book from someone and needed, and I'm in, I'm in Florida. So he wanted to know how to get to me in Florida and how to come for care. So even unintentionally, I never planned on a market out in California, this guy's calling to come in. So, you know, from just the cathartic nature of, I gotta get this on paper, to now how can I use this to build brand awareness, build authority in my area of expertise and, and kind of go from there. All three of those things have, uh, have really entered into the equation at different points. Well, and then you get this call from somebody, you know, very remote from you. Tell me, how, how does that make you feel knowing that when you've put your heart and soul into this book, you put it out in the community, you've, you've, you've overcome that that vulnerability because there's that personal story in there. People reaching out, knowing that you can bring a change into their life. What what is the feeling within when you when you when you had that call? When you know people were looking to to really see their life through a new lens because of the message you shared. Yeah, that was the ultimate. I mean, that was the goal of the book. I, and I said it. You know, my wife and I talking about it. If I can do that for one person, it was worth it. And this guy, I mean, he's been through a lot and he was done doing anything else. So for him to call and say, you know, you sparked a new energy in me and I, I've got to figure this out. That was, I mean, that was the goal of the book. If that's the only person that calls me, um, that, that part of it will be, you know, my message got out there and it helped one person spark that journey to continue trying to get better and, and, and go down that road and, and look at something that they hadn't thought might be an option to get them better, you know? So that was the ultimate pride. That was like, you know, that was the goal of getting it out there and it already fulfilled itself. So, so that was a, that was a great feeling. Yeah, okay. it is, and I'm so so grateful that you had that experience. And I think one thing I want to highlight for you is, and I think we all know this in chiropractic, and we all know this in, from a business perspective, that when one person sends you a message, there are ten other people that didn't. So we know that we are impacting so many more lives by by sharing your message. And there's something more profound than uh, in a book than writing a blog or even doing a podcast. The authority that does come with that and the impact that it can potentially have is so much more far-reaching. So. 
I just want to really acknowledge you, you for, for putting that message out there, sharing that message and, and you know, knowing that that impact is going to be far more reaching than you ever imagined. And BJ said that we never know how far reaching something we say or do now is going to be. And I really believe you writing a book is, you know, has that potential. Um, so as, as we, you know, again, I really thank you for time as we come to the end here. Is there any message you would have for the chiropractor out there who is either, you know, thinking of writing a book or wanting to share their message in a more compelling way or really moving into the, the space of wanting to make certain chiropractic is in its rightful place, not where people just come to as a last option, but potentially look to as a first option. How do you share the compelling story of chiropractic? And what would you say to the chiropractor wanting to really do that as well? Yeah, I think we need to share it more. Right. I think, you know, we get this oftentimes in our office when we teach people kind of the neuroscience behind what we do and we educate them in what we do in our approach. They're like, how do how did I not know about this before? Or, you know, how did how is this the first time I'm hearing about this? And we often joke that we're the best kept secret in healthcare. Right. We've been around for over 100 years and we still are kind of a secret in figuring it out. So if you've got a message, you have to share it. I mean, not only not only for chiropractic of ourselves, but for everybody suffering with something. You know, we have all these anecdotal stories and all of this stuff. If you've got those and you want to get them out and you're not sure what the science is behind it, reach out to me. I'd be happy to help you put that stuff together. And, you know, we have ways of connecting those dots and giving us some validity. Because right now, it's, and I always say this, it's an amazing time to be a chiropractor. The validity, it's not even us necessarily doing the research or having to neuroscience is putting it all together for us we just have to you know kind of point the application to what it is that we're doing so uh there's a ton of information out there if there's a message that you need to get out do it for everyone else it can be your story it can be your message but the public needs us now more than ever especially you know the mental health ties and those things to what we do <laughs> we're gonna when the end of this dust settles from 2020 uh we're gonna we're going to realize how much mental health is really suffering. And I think our piece, what we bring to the table for that piece with that population of people it is they're going to need us. They need 10,000 more than what we have of us or double the amount of what we have. So, but they need to know that's out there too. And so we need to have that message out there loud and clear, and we need to have it getting shouted from the rooftops and in books and in every other way, shape or form. So if there's anything I can do to help, kind of clarify that message i'd be happy to help but um we need to get those messages out there 100 percent, and and you're right in respect to the impact of um covid in terms of the mental health of people i interviewed dr um, newman nato who's a um, nutritional psychiatrist from harvard university and the statistics that they have got in from massachusetts um, hospital that she works at is 10.7 um, percent increase in attempted suicides and suicidal thoughts four times the increase in antidepressant and anti-anxiety anti medication alone in the, during the period of the epidemic. And we have the propensity and the possibility as a profession to impact that. And if we are not sharing our message, if we are not reaching out to our communities, they are going to go down the pathway that is inevitably counterproductive, if not destructive. And so there is a, there is, this is the time and, and we are the people. And so, I thank you for sharing your message and I know you've done, you're an incredible servant of chiropractic and you know, to, 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 to be willing to share any that support to people needing that science is just an evidence of the incredible character and person you are in chiropractic and for chiropractic. So Dr. Michael, I thank you so much. And I would have loved to have held your book up, but I bought it digitally. So the digital copy will be on the link below. You can get that at Amazon. You know, make sure you, you know, as chiropractors, we need to support each other. Grab. Um, you know, Dr. Michael's book, read that, share it, and then go out there and write your own. Dr. Michael, thank you. Really appreciate you. Appreciate all you have done for chiropractic and through chiropractic. It is incredible to speak to you again. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. You're welcome.